So what we talked about in the last video was the rule of universal generalization. And we went through an example to, to clarify that for you. So I hope it really is clear. If not, you rewatch the last video or leave comments in the comments, comment box. But moving on, we're going to have a couple of definitions and theorems that I want to go through. They're not super important, but I just want to go through them for just like, for just an FYI. So the first definition I have for you is let n be an integer. Now we call n even if n is divisible by 2. And there exists an integer r so that n equals 2r. So pretty much anything times by 2 will give you an even, even number, even, even integer. So if n is not even, then we call n odd. And we find that for this case, there exists an integer s where we have n equals 2s plus 1. Now, if we have s and we times that by 2, it will become odd. The plus 1 is what makes the whole thing even. It's what, or the plus 1 is what makes the whole thing odd. It will, so 2s plus 1 is what makes n odd or not even. This seems very intuitive, but then they have pretty much mathematicians have have like a statement for everything that that for every for every kind of thing like this so even if it's if it's plain and simple that you see it they have what they will have a statement for it so moving on theorem 2.2 is for all interest k and l if k and l are both odd then k plus l is even now here i have proofs or written notes of some proofs of why this is but that's not really important. So you, all you gotta know here, or it is important, but I don't think that it should be like I don't think I would I should have to go through it with you guys because, well, personally, I don't think you guys are even gonna remember this because I didn't even remember it before, uh, before I did this video again. So for all integers k and l, if k and l are both odd, then k plus l is even. That is just an FYI. Pretty sure it's not gonna be tested but it's good to know so moving on you can go through the proofs on your own because uh, they're just proofs that prove this theorem correct and i don't want to really go through it that's all so there are three more statements after that for all integers k plus l if k and l are both odd then the product k times l is also odd and if m is an even integer then m plus seven is odd uh, for all positive real number x and y, if the product x, y is greater than 25, then x is greater than 5 and y is greater than 5. And again, I hate proofs myself, so I'm not going to go through the proofs. So you could just use the state. You could just know this, know the theorem and get by. I don't really feel like you got to know every single proof out there because proofs are hard, believe it or not. I didn't, did not have a good time with proofs go psycho doing proofs but anyway more on to the fun stuff we're gonna go through and check the validity or invalidity of these statements so here we have uh, two questions and we're gonna try to determine whether it's a valid it's a valid argument or if it's not a valid argument so all the ma all mail carriers uh, carry makes now mail carriers are those people that deliver uh, deliver your mail, so we'll represent that by mx. So it's a mail carrier. And carry mace, we'll define that by, I don't know, like px. Carry mace. So all mail carriers carry mace, so what we're saying is mx implies px. And Jones is a mail carrier, so that's MJ. So using uh, MJ, so that means that Jones must carry mace because this is the statement. So we could just pretty much turn that into MJ implies PJ because this statement implies the truth for all that that all mail carriers carry mace. Well. Jones the mail carrier that implies Jones carry mace. So using MJ implies PJ and MJ, we find that PJ. Therefore, Jones carries mace because he's a mail carrier. And this is a valid statement 
because what we used here is we just used the rule of universal specification for, for this and we use modus ponens for for uh, finding out the result. So here it's modus, oh not modus, modus tonins, but modus ponens or the rule of attachment. So here, the second one is the law-abiding citizen one. So let's have um, let's have Alex be law-abiding citizen. And let's have TXB pay their taxes. So uh, what is said here is AX uh, LX implies PX. Well, not PX, but LX implies T TX. Jesus crisis. I have trouble writing this morning. So law-abiding citizens pay, implies they pay their taxes. Now Mr. Su pays his taxes. So therefore, Mr. Liu is a law-abiding citizen. Now this is invalid. Why? Because you're arguing by the converse. So this is wrong. So this does not work out. Uh, invalid argue by converse there this modus ponens does not work here because lx implies tx tx that does not imply or that does not give the result of therefore mr mr su is the law abiding citizen for all we know mr su could pay his taxes and he could be a freaking drug lord so no chance this would work it's invalid because we're arguing by converse so that's all i want to go through today uh, in the next video, we're going to go through one more example. But other than that, please rate, comment, subscribe. Leave your comments in the comment box if you have any. And I'll see you guys again next time.